Sweet. Yep. My dad had uh, six of those. Nice. And I kept the best one. Cool. Well, it's in a soft landing area. Yeah, that's true. I just gotta get We're always looking for more stuff, so oh, oh yeah, get to see all kinds of different tractors out and about. Uh, I sold his eight in. I got two Jubilees right now. Oh yeah, yeah. These are the before pictures, and then it'll be transformed. In <laughs> yeah. All right, so, we'll so try. the center stand is down, yeah, so yeah. it's going to be a kind of a pain, but mm -hmm. uh, I'll try to. I'll give you a yank. Are you guys ready? One, two, three, go! Uh, you want to try and put some air in them? That's a bit of a beast, ain't it? Yeah. See how wide that motor oh, is, man. If you can find like a plank of something solid to put under the center stand here. Uh, I can just hold it if you... Yeah, they got like, they made like gear sets for it. Yep. That's cool. What is it? Well, he's modified the bike, like, kind of racy, like, it's, oh, pretty, yeah. it's pretty neat. It was a race bike. I don't see what mm -hmm. that, that side cover sitting around somewhere. Yeah. Yeah, it's a shame you lost the tank and the exhaust. I know, dude, but you know what? I, I, like I said, I haven't even talked to the guy. 25 years. Right, Here's a little plank. Right. That'd be a good picture. Yeah. Hearing some of the background conversations and stories and stuff. Yeah. Everything you say will be used against you. Yeah. <laughs> Besides, he sees it on YouTube. <laughs> hey man, what happened to my motorcycle? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, let's see. I'm talking in point back. I don't know if the rear sets or not rear sets. The clip-ons were original Benelli or yeah, some aftermarket part. The rear sets are so cool though. Oh yeah. Like, those look like decent pieces. You can see where they cut off the lever down here, add the uh, perch on the back. That drum cover's got fins on it. The Lordo carbs, yeah. barn find out if I do a lap around see if there's anything else up there. Oh, go ahead all right what well, you got pickers I... newspapers and occasional okay. potato oh yeah you can't shoot anything steel out of it because if there's any remnants of Mars going down a barrel then they know you
how freaking cool is this? All right guys, so it's the next morning. Let's take a look at this purchase that I made. So I had about five minutes yesterday where I was waiting for my computer to turn on to send out some orders. And of course, I found myself on Marketplace just long enough to find this thing. It had popped up and uh, I, didn't, I didn't even have time to screenshot the ad, but this thing was laying on its side, the wheels half buried in the dirt. Um, pretty crazy though I had to do definitely had to do a double take because I'm thinking it's like a another Benelli uh, like a four cylinder and not that that wouldn't be cool but I'm like wait a minute those cylinders don't align exactly right so yeah it's a Benelli six um, I don't even know what year it is to be honest it's, it's I don't know I, the tags right there now that now I can actually see it but uh, yeah I happen to have a bike loaded in the van I was getting ready to leave and went ahead and unloaded that thing, called a friend, called the other guy, and it was just like, he was available. So it was about an hour and a half drive, went down there, got it. So, yeah, uh, this story though, is that uh, the, the gentleman I purchased it from, he, it had been in his barn for like over 20 years or something like that, and it was his uh, brother-in-law's bike, who uh, I guess he took it apart to paint it perhaps, and it just never went back together. I guess he had just had some troubles in life and whatnot and, and uh, just kind of like vanished off the face of the earth, so to speak. So there's no telling if he's around, but apparently his name was BJ as well, which is crazy. Um, but regardless, went down there, didn't ask too many questions about it. You know, there's no title, no tank, no exhaust, um, but it's still a Benelli 6 and at least it's out of the barn. So I feel like I've, I've done my part. So I'm, I'm not sure how well this was captured in the videos yesterday, but these calipers are frozen solid to these rotors. So the front wheel, we were not able to spin. Um, we actually had some straps going to the top or the lower triple here and we we're towing it with the tractor and it, would, it wouldn't budge. So uh, we ended up dragging it in and, and luckily it was a little slick outside. We were able to drag this in backwards. Worked really well. So, um, really cool but my mission today is to uh, go ahead and just crack the calipers loose try to just break them loose off the rotors and uh, at least make the front wheel spin so I can get this thing out of the van power wash it and uh, see kind of what we're what we're left with so it was one of those ran when parked kind of deals we'll see about that but uh, yeah it's a uh, it's project <laughs> Oh. I'm so fragile. There has to be a retainer pin in here somewhere. All right, so I just grabbed a piece of uh, round bar and I put a little divot in the end of the drill press. I'm gonna try to press these pins from the back side here. So this one doesn't have any caliper bolts in it, so that's not cool. All right, well that one's obviously not clamped on the wheel, so. I hate using pliers, so I've got my smoothest set here. Okay. 
so there's our little retainer pin there. All right. Got that pad moved so it's unseized. And that one's moving. Trust me, I don't like hitting this thing with a hammer either, but gotta crack this thing loose. I'm only one guy, I have to get it out of here. I still have a feeling it's still the pads. Alright, so we're out of the van. Let me kind of take you around some of the things I found. Now, when I originally saw this bike in the ad, I only saw it on its side, just one photo, and uh, I knew it was rough. But what I didn't know was that it was modified. So you can see there's some clip ons here. The top triple has been shaved down. And then here, this is evidence obviously they had a fairing on it, along with these mounts down here. And then they've actually taken off the uh, pegs, welded on a bracket here, and done uh, a set of rear sets. And these things are like aluminum and they're pretty damn cool. So, I don't know guys, like, I, the thing is, I, I bought this thing because obviously it's sitting in a barn. I want to rescue a piece of motorcycle history, you know? You know I have a lot of projects going on, but since getting this, and seeing that it's modified, you know, I have no interest in doing another restoration. You guys know I have that CBX restoration going right now. Well, how cool would it be to build a period racer out of this thing? Since it's already modified, it's not like I'm messing with a piece of history or like ruining the value of it. It's not worth restoring, you know, like how cool would it be to put, you know, just some better electronics on it, get it running, clean it up, and then uh, do like a fiberglass, like an AirTac tank on it or something, and then a cool, a cool fairing, and make like a period 70s, 80s road racer out of it. I mean, you got the dual piston Brembos up front. I hear the forks are pretty good on these things, like just the handling's pretty good. How awesome would that be? It's just such a neat bike. And the cool thing is, throttle's not even seized up whenever we got there this cap on the uh, on the carburetor was missing so I was really worried you know I didn't know how many parts are gonna be missing but it was just sitting right there so we're looking at relatively very very complete drivetrain and fuel system
So taking a closer look at this thing, I mean, I noticed the filters, but I wanted to make a point that, uh, like if you remember my CBX, it didn't have an air filter in it. And what we found was a lot of debris, like there was nuts, like little, like, like, uh, like tree nuts uh, in the intake manifolds and stuff. The carburetors had a bunch of crap in them. There was stuff in the cylinders, but this has all three filters on it. And I just peeked inside the uh, exhaust ports there, and the, the exhaust valves uh, look like they're in better shape than uh, than the CBX was for sure. So you'll have to excuse the sound of the garbage truck. But over here, this cover obviously it had fallen on this side, and uh, it was laying like kind of it had fallen over onto a pallet. So this got damaged here. Something tells me a CB750 or 550 cover might just fit that, you know. But luckily, I think this cover is in good shape. This aluminum, this cast aluminum piece. Uh, we have a cracked valve tappet cover here. Intake manifolds obviously shot. I mean, there's some stuff you would expect to be bad. Alright, well uh, this thing is in the shop and I'm not going to spend a bunch of time on this thing today. Um, I want to take this back to the warehouse and grab two other bikes, but I think in a little bit of time I can pull the spark plugs out, I can stick the bore scope in there, kind of get a general idea of what the condition is, but what's interesting is like, you know, the clutch wasn't frozen, the engine, you know, it seems like it sh actually shifts. Um, I haven't even looked at the oil or anything like that. I'm I'm gonna assume this thing's probably not even seized up. I I know it was stored in a barn, but like who knows? I, I'm gonna give it a shot. So I'll pull this cover off. We'll see uh, what what lies behind that, and I don't know. We'll just uh, we'll fiddle around with it a little bit.
plot thickens. So let me show you what I found. Bottom of the case is cracked right there. Now, this thing had a bunch of mud on it, right? I couldn't see the horizontal lines. Now, in the barn it was laying on the right side and it looked like it fell on a pallet uh, that was under the bike. So I had assumed that the cracked fin here was due to the same thing just falling over. So now, seeing that we had the mud off of it, uh, this thing was moving when it went down. My new suspicion is that maybe the fairing was, of course, on it and, you know, it was ran when parked, but it was ran when parked into a ditch or something. So it probably tore the fairing up and that's why we're not seeing any, any major damage on like the lever. Um, luckily, it doesn't look like there's anything else. Um, obviously, this is savable, but yeah, it's not exactly a... Uh, get it running right now kind of thing. Ugh. I'd hate to just like fill that thing with JB Weld just to get it going, but man, that sucks. So, and I'm, this is, I'm not at all mad at the seller. There's no way he would have known that. It wasn't his bike and it was just buried. So, um, you know, it's part of the risk you take. It's still cool though. <laughs> Well, we have a decision to make. So I do not have time for another large project right now. I have so many underway, as I've mentioned many times before. Um, but we got this out of the barn. So we have at least succeeded in that mission in the fact that we're, we're doing something. We're, we're making forward progress in saving a motorcycle uh, of historical significance. So case being cracked here. That pretty much sucks. So, <laughs> um, now I have a TIG, I could obviously weld this, but I would have to disassemble the engine or at least remove the lower case half. I don't know if that's possible without having to disassemble more stuff on a Benelli. Now, if we did that, obviously the engine's coming out. Uh, I don't know. Now, this isn't gonna be a restoration bike. If anything, it's a parts bike uh, or like a vintage road race bike or something or a modified like cafe racer or something. So I don't know how much we have to worry about um, doing like concourse level repairs right now. I could JB weld that. I'm just saying I, I could I could just fill that with JB weld, replace one point because that's cracked from the impact, just this point here. Um, and then replace this, uh, this bolt here, like fill this and with weld, maybe, I don't know, like just, or keep it as it is, but I am going, I'm still going to continue. I'm going to go ahead and pull the plugs out of this thing and look in the cylinders and see what we're dealing with. Cause I have a feeling this thing's in decent shape the, under the valve tap, it covers looks perfect, you know, um, so I'm going to continue ahead, but just know if I, if I do JB Weld on this, it's not a permanent thing. It's just like, why not? You know, what have we got to lose at this point? It's cool. So, it's a battle scar. 
Try to stay positive about this. The plot thickens again. So I don't have a damn socket that'll fit into that tiny little hole down there uh, to get those plugs out. So I, granted, I actually, of all tools that I don't have for motorcycles, it's some specific plug sockets. I have modified sockets that can get like a hardware store, but yeah, I just need to get like an actual toolkit type socket. So I think I'm just gonna go for it. We'll just uh, see if this thing, if, if it can roll over or not. Now, yes, also you guys are gonna yell at me anyway for rotating off this side like you always do. It's because there's no nut on the other side. I'm not pushing hard enough. going to want to, that's going to want to crack. Damn. Got a Kickstarter over here. <laughs> How about this? I will lift the back of the bike up, get the rear wheel off the ground, click it up into gear, and then we'll just rotate it uh, with the tire. All right, let's go ahead and just click this thing up into gear. Five speed. Okay. <clears throat> Got nothing. Awesome. Well, damn. We haven't really made a whole lot of progress on this thing, but again, at least it's out of the barn and its future is less uncertain, so to speak. Now, uh, unfortunately, I can't put this on the top of the priority list, but it's so damn cool, it might work its way up eventually. So I have numerous builds on the way, and this one is definitely probably highest on the cool factor so I don't know it's it is pretty unfortunate that we did uncover the uh, the damage to the case there and the fact that this thing is seems to be locked up now what I will do is I will go ahead and get a uh, the correct plug wrench for this thing I will still inspect the cylinders but I'm gonna go ahead and bring this back to the warehouse like I said I'll, I'll still work on it here and there kind of tinker with it but I'm not gonna put a lot of time in it right now but if you want to see some, uh, you know, some epic inline six goodness, I have the uh, the CBX restoration underway, and I'm still working on the engine rebuild for that one. And uh, yeah, until then though, I guess we'll we'll pour one out for this bike for the uh, for the Italian homies. Sorry, girl. So anyway, I hope you guys like this video. It's really cool digging these things out of the barn. And I hope to see more of it. So anyway, let me know what you guys think in the comments. And uh, yeah, subscribe if you haven't already. Check out some other videos on the channel. And I hope to see you in the next video. Thanks for watching. Bertoli. Yep. Feel better, old girl.